hi ladies doing these three things is definitely making your issues worse i'm jen lormand exercise physiologist i'm christina walsh licensed physical therapist and we get a lot of questions from women about this stuff okay i know you're telling me that you've got these things that are going to help but please help me know what I'm doing that's actually hurting me. I don't, I don't want to, I want to stop doing those things. And we've got three big things that many women are doing, having no idea that it's actually making all your issues worse. Number one, wearing heels. Uh, this is a big one because it causes increased pressure in your low back. It causes your hips to keep <laughs> working too hard. Those hip flexors in the front, and it causes increased downward pressure. If you're dealing with any sort of prolapse situation of any of the compartments, it'll make all that stuff worse too. Not to mention pulling on your low back. So if you have low back discomfort, tightness, or hip pain, really stop the heels. The next one is wearing compressive garments. So raise your hand if you're guilty of you know your belly's feeling poochy maybe your thighs are feeling a little bit like they're rubbing together so you throw on those nice compressive spanks underneath your dress so that everything looks nice and smooth but then you notice halfway through the dinner your stomach's feeling bloated you're having pains in your stomach these are all signs that you should not be wearing those compressive garments because it's creating a lot of downward negative pressure we get a lot of pushback on this one because ladies want to feel good in their dresses when they're going out, when they're in this in-between stage. Yep. The, the analogy that <laughs> Jen gives that I think is so uh, visually appropriate and powerful is the toothpaste tube. And what do we mean by that? So imagine you've got the toothpaste tube and you're holding it upside down. The, the cap is here and you've loosened it or taken it off and putting on that compressive garment. It's like taking that toothpaste. The pressure has got to go somewhere. So it's like taking that tube of toothpaste and going, where does it go? Right out the bottom. That's your pelvic floor. And you're exerting all that extra pressure on that area by cinching everything in with that compressive garment. But it's not just the shapewear. Yeah. This extends past shapewear. And if this might really hit home for any of you who've dealt with any of this, th this extends to the compressive exercise garments. A lot of women really after having kids need to size up one. And it's not because you're fatter or any of that. It's just because our bodies do change. And if you're noticing after you've worn that compressive <clears> exercise <throat> wear that by the end of the day, your belly is feeling swollen or you're noticing increased pressure, discomfort in your back, your yeah. hips or increased symptoms of the P issues or pressure down there. That's your body saying, Oh my gosh, please stop it. You're suffocating me. That's the toothpaste yeah. tube effect again. And you, that it's not kind to your body. It's not worth it. Size up, you know, it, well, and it could be still, you know, simple things like squeezing into your skinny jeans that are one size too small. That can also create that downward negative pressure. So just pay attention to this as you're wearing your exercise garments or um, even with the, the Spanx type compressive undergarments, if you're really feeling like you need some of that to smooth things out, size way up on that so that, and I, I always recommend rolling the pants down, like the exercise pants. If you just roll the waist down, that can help decrease some of that pressure. And the last one, the last one a we big one. see constantly. We it see pains it. us. Yes. And, <laughs> and well, and we know because we've done it ourselves. This is a human thing and it's a, it's a trial and error process. The last one is continuing to push through exercises that actually are making things worse. If you are noticing when you are exercising that the pee leaks are getting worse or you're in the middle of an exercise and you suddenly feel like that urgency, I've got to go, got to go or if your back is causing discomfort either during the exercise or later that day, and any of those things getting worse, either during or a little bit after the exercise, that means that, that your body is not ready for that level of exertion and that <clears throat> level of, of being pushed. The weights are too much. The duration is too long. The frequency is too high. That's what your body is like trying to scream at you and say, oh my gosh, please slow down and stop. I can't handle this. The other two big ones that I see with women are they're very frustrated because they've been told, okay, you need to strengthen your core and your glutes and things will start to get better in terms of the low back pain, maybe hip tightness and whatnot. And so because they're determined to get stronger, even when they're doing core exercises and they're feeling their hip flexors doing the work, 
they just figure, okay, I need to get stronger. So I'm just going to continue to push through this. Or maybe they have that dormant butt syndrome and they've been told, okay, you've got to do bridges every single day. And they just keep doing those bridges. Meanwhile, they're only feeling it in the front of the thighs, the quads or the hip flexors, and they're not able to get those glutes on board. And things just start getting rolling worse and worse in the wrong direction. And you're frustrated. We get it. We hear the stories. We get the messages in our inbox. And that's why we're so passionate about what we do. Yes. And and these women often end up being the method hoppers. Yes. Because you try to go back to the thing that worked for you before for your core or your glutes. And it doesn't anymore. And you're feeling it in your hip flexors. You're feeling it in your knees or your quads. Yeah. You can't get the right things to turn on. So you're like, okay, I guess this isn't going to work for me anymore. You're going to try something else. I'm going to go to Pio. I'm going to go to yoga. I'm going to go bar to spin or bar. And then maybe it feels a little bit better for a while, but then eh, not so good at the long term, and you're still not getting the results you're after. We're talking to you. If that's you, then it's appreciate to do some slow, slow down, down to speed up. up. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and maybe it doesn't feel sexy in the moment, but when you get the thing that does turn those muscles on and you feel them working for you again, all of a sudden your motivation and your self-esteem and your confidence goes through the roof and you feel that strength coming back and it is worth that slowdown every step of the way. Well, and I appreciate, especially we both do, the mental component to this, which is I loved swinging me some kettlebells. I felt strong. I felt powerful. I got my heart rate up. It was great strength training. It was like the best two for one. Here's the deal though. My neck hated it. My mid back hated it. My low back hated it. And my pelvic floor hated it even more <laughs> after having three kids. Yeah. And a traumatic birth and a five finger width DR. Jen's been through a lot, but it, she has turned that around to empower each of you with the knowledge to not end up in these cycles. Well, and we appreciate the mental load that that creates in terms of a lot of you are using exercise as your stress relief and the thought of losing that or you know you maybe you've lost hope because you've tried several different things it hasn't worked maybe you've gotten injections in your hip and back taken painkillers and you just feel like you're stuck in this cycle maybe you even feel like you did take a break you did rest for a while and you tried to get back into it and it still didn't work. It feels defeating. It feels overwhelming. There's a grieving process that goes along with yes. this. This is not to be minimized. And we really do understand that too. Um, there can be a panicky feeling. If you feel like someone's trying to take something away from you, that's yes. not what this is about. This is about slowing down mm -hmm. to speed up. And if any of this resonated with you, the Tighten Your Tinkler Signature Program would be a perfect fit because it is the perfect slow down to speed up. It turns all the right muscles on so that you can get back to the things that you did love doing in a calculated way, such that it is no longer feels like a cycle of dysfunction and symptoms and the wrong things turning on and that cycle of frustration and anxiety. It turns back into an empowered journey to be strong in your body again, and it is accessible. And so if any of this resonated with you, head over to our website, take the five minute tinkler quiz. It will help connect the dots for you on the different things that you may be dealing with and not recognizing that they're all connected. And it will give you a score to tell you where you fall in the range of participants from our research study to say, hey, is this a good fit for you or not? And that's at tightenyourtinkler.com. <clears throat> Easy to remember. Until next time, ladies.